two American judges, one from Puerto Rico. Third defence of the title is for Steve Collins, and he still hopes for a big money fight with Nigel Ben if Ben doesn't retire. Neville Brown, the challenger from Burton on Trent in Staffordshire, the British middleweight champion, moving into world class in the black and white stripes. He's a top class, world class amateur Brown, and very unlucky indeed not to fight in an Olympics. But the usual rugged aggression from Collins and Brown getting into some good looking head punches and looking sharp there. Yes, that's what he's got to do. Collins is going to storm in here. When he does that in recent fights, he's looked on gamely and missed wildly. So really, this is where the boxing of Neville Brown has got to come into play. He's got to sharply try and counter. And the only other occasion when Brown was pitched into international class, he was beaten in seven rounds in a European title fight by Agostino Cardamoni in Italy. Brown landed with a good right of a cut as Collins came forward there. So he looks sharp, Brown. Collins is among the most resilient of fighters, as I've said, he's never been stopped. But don't underestimate Brown's punch power. That could be a factor a few people haven't considered in this fight. <laughs> Trying to present, it's clear already, Collins with a mobile target. Oh, he's a right hand from Collins! Brown is down in the first round, chopping middle right to the head. He's up quickly, will get a mandatory eight count. And he winks across the ring at Collins as if to say, decent shot. But Brown in trouble in round one. Collins promised us he'd be a lot sharper tonight than he was last time against Cornelius Carr. And that is exactly the kind of psychological edge that he was looking to establish straight away. Yes, he's been very aggressive and plowing forward with the big punches. And he's trying to out -psych and really out-hustle Brown in the ring. Does that mean that Brown, moving up to super middleweight, is feeling the weight of a full-blown super middle's punches already in there? It could be. He really just has to keep a, a clean mind. He's got to concentrate on, on his own job. Raw walk forward aggression from Collins, exactly the tactics that retired Chris Eubank. There was some talk that he might revert to his old counter punching style, but not much evidence of that early on here. Right hand from Brown, decent shot. It's been a good start for the champion. Brown doesn't seem too badly shaken up. So he doesn't, down. he doesn't seem too fierce out of it. And that's a big round for Collins. Steve Collins has had his man down in the first round in this world title defence. Yes, just a, a choppy little punch on the top of the head. I think Brown was a little bit off balance. I don't think he was too badly hurt. We see just right on the top of the head. Corners, 10 seconds. And probably that first round will have gone down as right Collins is by a two-point margin, 10 to 8. Round two, due to go 12, of course, and again, He's on the run, almost went down again there. It looks as if he did touch down to me. Yes, he did. Brown is complaining, but he has to get a mandatory eight count. He touched down. Only briefly, but the referee got that right. And Collins here is bullying him and using his strength as the natural super middleweight against the man who's moving up into this division for the first time. Yes, and nothing really is going right for Brown at this point. He needs to land a good punch, he needs to get a bit of confidence. Good right hand. Brown put up a superlative effort last time 
in a defence of his British middleweight title against Sean Cummings, but he's in trouble here early on. He's being pulled around by Collins. He just looks much more stronger and very, very hungry as well. He's brawling him. And Brown will do well to get out of this hole. Caught by a right uppercut inside, I think, as well. Brown there. This is really just trying to out-rough Brown. Brown's trying to fight back here, but good punches from Collins. And you wouldn't think this really is Neville Brown's sort of fight to stand and train and brawl with him. You'd think, really, that he'd be better trying to use his boxing skills on the outside. This is what he started off in the fight doing. He needs to get a little bit of room to get his punches off. This close fighting like this is suiting Collins' extra strength. Brown winked at his corner then, as if to say, I'm OK, don't worry about me. He's throwing plenty of his own. Collins tees off with a left hook this time. Looking marked already around the face, Neville Brown. Good right-hand counter from Brown there. Been an explosive start to the contest. Brown again, tagged by a right hand, which kind of just skidded off. He rode it quite well. Just occasionally, as Glenn was saying, just producing his own quite telling counter, Neville Brown, but it certainly not having the same effect as Collins' punches. And this is really a tremendous pace that Collins setting. How long can he keep this sort of workout going? He's, he's really going for a stoppage here. Big right hand again from Collins, got through to the side of Brown's head. Brown hasn't been elusive enough so far. He's been dragged into Collins' kind of fight. And he wants to trade with him. And remember, I'll say it again, Collins has never been stopped, so really the way to go about beating him is to try to do it and outbox him maybe over the 12 rounds. You would think. Just a bit unsteady on his legs, he seems brown as well. Two rounds gone in this WBO super middleweight title fight at Mill Street in Ireland. Neville Brown here has been down in both rounds and he's in a critical phase of the fight. He must get through this opening period, you feel? Yes, I think if he gets through this phase he'll do all right, but it's a very hard part of the fight for him here. Round three. Can Brown get a foothold? He needs to start working you'd feel wouldn't you Glenn behind that jab and come up with a bit more lateral movement and ask Collins some more questions Not Collins at the moment is just able to walk in and tee off yes he seems he seems ready to stand and have a fight with Collins but you would feel that the best thing he can do is use movement try and pick Con Collins off Brown. walking forward out of the Brendan Ingle camp, which has got so many uh, star names, led by Prince Nassim Hamid, Neville Brown, but another good shot by Collins, and it was the uppercut there. It's funny how Collins has just sort of evolved into a brawler, really, isn't That's it? That's right, his style, career. yes, when he was pretty much a boxer and a counterpuncher, become a real brawler. But his work rate and his intensity is very impressive. Just hasn't let Brown settle. Maybe he thought that the man in his first world title fight would freeze and he would try to pounce on him early. That's worked quite well for him. It has on the scorecards, but Brown is still there. Yes, he's still there. And every now and again, he lands with good counters, Brown. Blood from the nose of Collins. Nothing much to worry him. Chris Eubank twice and the likes of Tony Thornton and Kevin 
watch Chris Pyatt, Sam Story and Cornelius Carr. But this is a real intense, a very physical fight. noise around the arena just as there was a year ago in that epic battle which was voted fight of the year between Collins and Chris Eubank I think Eubank was beaten for the first time good right uppercut inside from Brown and he's managing to push Collins back a little bit now Big right hands going in, right on the side of the head of Brown. He's really planting his feet for them as well, Collins. Setting himself. Walking, brawling, again, marauding tactics from the man who calls himself the Celtic warrior, Steve Collins. All the heads seem to come dangerously close together there. After the jab by Brown. Oh, there's the first round where Brown hasn't been on the floor. so far it's the first in a series of anglo-irish sporting confrontations which will continue at cheltenham and twickenham in the next few days good work there from collins work inside clubbing punches around the head of brown he's doing very well there the beautiful left uppercut this has all got to be taking a lot out of neville brown it's a much much sharper performance this by collins so far brown just hasn't been allowed to settle corner have told Brown I understand for one round just try to stay away from him he wrestles Collins to the floor there and we'll get a little warning Brown's really he's got to obey the corner he's got to try and get back to some boxing just let himself settle into this fight a little bit. Good job there, Landon from Brown. Oh, that was a really big right hand from Neville Brown. His best punch so far. Really landed cleanly. But Collins can really absorb a punch, and there's another one. You just wonder whether Brown may get a second wind in the fight. Well, I'm sure he's done everything possible in training. He'll be in great condition for this fight, and he's going to have to be because it's a such a physical fight, a very demanding test. Brown just using his jab a wee bit more, and he needs to. And kind of switching to south for a moment to throw the right hand. He just has to hope, I think, too, that the Collins fire burns out a little. Oh, he's got him. In reverse gear, though, forced back almost for the first time, Collins. This is Brown's best round so far. Does he just give himself a little bit more room in this round? I think Collins is just maybe a little tired as well. He set a, an unbelievable pace in the early rounds. Such an unbelievable pace, do you think that it possibly could have punched himself out or not? I think it's still a bit early, and he's, he'll get a second win. There's still a lot left in him, but it, obviously... It was a lot to do so early. I think he was going for the, the stoppage early and that hasn't come off. Now he's going to have to rethink his plan. All left from Collins is a punch which really sent the head spinning of Brown. Brown has had to take some very good Collins punches here. But so far he's stood up to everything. Collins. On the reverse, they're in the corner, and this is turning into a really grueling battle of almost trench warfare between these two. It ha 
has the makings, and only the makings, you'd say, at the moment, of maybe turning out to be something quite memorable. Unrelenting pace, but no doubt about it, Brown's best round so far, switching styles momentarily, and I think he nicked that round, Brown. The WBO super middleweight title by Neville Brown, the challenger in the black and white stripes, down in the first two rounds, but having a better round in the fourth there against Steve Collins. Has Brown, you wonder, just weathered Collins' initial blitz? Collins has dropped the pace off a little bit, and that's suiting Brown because now he's got a little bit more room to work and get his, his boxing going. Oh, getting a li little bit ragged as they almost fall around the ring, the two of them there. By the way, uh, Steve Collins tonight, for the first time in a while, does not have his mind doctor, Tony Quinn, with him. They seem to have temporarily parted company. I don't know if that's a permanent thing. I don't know whether that maybe they'll get back together. How much has Brown got left after taking so much punishment in the first two and a half, three rounds? Both men land there with good punches. It's a much more even contest now, though, at this yes, point. Yes, Collins gets off with a few good ones, then Brown comes back with good ones of his own. Cut by the right eye of Brown. A problem, blood flowing by the side of the eye. At the moment, it doesn't look to be flowing into it. And he was cut in his last fight as well. But he came through that and won against Sean Cummins. This is a much stiffer test, at a much higher level against Collins. Good punches inside from Collins there, but Brown again comes back. It's a literally bloody battle. Brown with a cut right eye, and referee Wiso Fernandez taking a very close look at it. They've gone past the point here in the contest, which is three rounds, where it would be a no contest if, if it was stopped because of the cut they would, I think, just go to the scorecards. Now, is he going to let this go on? Doctors have a look at it. Yeah, it's all right. Well, they at least should give the corner a chance to work on it, I would think, between the rounds. Collins redoubles his efforts to force the stoppage. Big right hand nail, Brown with his back to the Reds. Collins has picked it up again in this fifth round. Yes, Collins knows that Brown's cut. He, he must be thinking if he can put a, a good bit of pressure on here, that will force an intervention. Neville Brown is finding it hot in his first attempt to become a world champion at the age of 30. it with a left uppercut. Brown surely can't carry on taking those. Collins goes back, the winner of the round. Let's have a look how bad is the cut. I must say, my first impression was that it wasn't too bad, but then it just seemed to worsen. 
Don't get the knee beaters, I'm talking to you. The eye's all right. The eye's all right, says Brendan Ingle to Neville Brown. Don't worry about it. Yes, he's going to say that. It did, it did look bad when we got a close look. It didn't look a... But the doctor's let him go on for the time. He's having a better look at it now, the doctor. Doctor takes a look as well. Seems to be happy. Breathing heavily. This is how we think the cut happened. Was it a punch or a clash of heads? The referee has certainly made no indication to the judges that he thought it was a clash of heads. So you have to presume it was a, a punch, but was it? The heads were, they were very dangerously close. It looked like a clash there. Certainly they came together. Yes, I think that was it. Round six. Collins in his tartan trunks, as always. His lucky shorts. He's winning the fight at the moment, no question about it. Neville Brown will have to produce a superlative effort. Glen McCrory's scorecard will underline how far Collins is in front. Two 10-8 rounds to begin with, with the knockdowns. There's a massive task now for Neville Brown to pull this back somehow. The beginning of this round, Tom is just changing his tactics a little bit now, and now he's standing up, looking to jab and box. I think he just wants a little respite. He's worked very hard at the beginning of this fight. Okay, big shot from Collins. Brown is a bit of a puncher at middleweight, but is he at super middleweight? A very, very hard fight. That's better from Brown, using his boxing skills, the ones that made him a world-class amateur with those nice left jabs, but really, in all honesty, what's going on in there is a long, long way away from the amateur game. Yes, very much so. Collins just eased off the gas a little bit, and that's allowing Brown to use his good boxing skills. This sort of fight suits Brown. Collins, 31 years of age, has taken him so long He's had so much hardship on his way through to the top, but now he's got there. Whoever wins his title is going to have to rip it away from him. He wants the big paydays that still may be out there for him. Maybe against Ben, who knows, against Eubank if he comes back. Sugar Boy Malinga wants a taste of the action. They're all fights in which he can earn. But Brown has come through so many rough patches here, and give him credit. He's still in there, and he's having one of his better rounds in there at the moment. Or was until Collins ran it with that heavy right hand. Good, good, solid right hand. He's took some very solid punches, Brown. Again, his boxing's just dropped off a little bit, Brown. He started the round well, but dropped off towards the end. Boxing live from Ireland tonight, and local hero Steve Collins in charge against Neville Brown. Good right hand there and the left hook. Just when Brown looked as if he's trying to get his boxing going, he comes storming back, Collins. He's 
just hasn't looked really defensively tight enough among other no, he has he, he should have tried to be a little bit more elusive and catch, catch the counters, but he hasn't done that. He stood in front of Collins. It has to be said that Brown is fighting Collins' kind of fight in there at the moment. Or give Steve Collins some credit as well. Collins is making him fight it. Yes, he hasn't really given Neville Brown a, a chance. He's forced the pace throughout. You do feel that Collins' much, much greater experience at this level has been a factor here as well as he lands with another jolting right uppercut. Still, Brown wants to trade with him. And you sense that that's a game he probably can't win. Yes, and this is also this is a much focused, much more focused Collins. He's a lot better in this fight than he was in his last fight. He's really up for this one. Been training in Jersey, normally prepares in Los Angeles, but didn't fancy the jet lag of travelling over a week or so before the fight. It's been a much sharper performance this by Collins. Eye doesn't seem too bad of Neville Browns. The uh, corner have done a decent job. Neither of them finding the other particularly hard to hit. No, not a great deal of defence from either man. Breathing heavily, Brown. You wonder at what point this non-stop aggression and this heavy-handed punching of Collins just might start to really wear Brown down. Brown's colleagues, led by Clifton Mitchell, the British heavyweight title contender, are just behind his corner, trying to lift him. Again, Collins good. shows no signs of letting up, Glenn. Good punches in, in close from Collins. He just keeps pushing the fight, forcing it on, using his strength. better from Brown, looks much better when he starts to use the jab and move. And every time he does that, Collins just sucks up the punishment, breathes in, walks forward again, and he's winning this fight big at the moment, Steve Collins. Well, champion, come on, don't forget this is what it is. You haven't gone, you haven't gone, you can hurt him. You can hurt him. You can hurt him. This is your goal, this is your goal. All right, Tom, all right, keep it. Now, never, off the jab. Right hand, left two. You got me? You just step off, I'm all right now. Come on, come on, listen to the time. It's good to tell you. And Neville Brown is putting up a brave challenge here, but he's heavily marked, he's cut, he's been down twice, and he's a long way behind. Yes, you hear Brendan in the corner, they're saying, make him miss the counter. They know what sort of fight he should fight. Just Steve Collins keeps drawing him into a, a bruising battle. Now, are we going to see Brown try to use jab and move tactics? Collins will try to cut him off on the corners if he does that. Real battle-hardened warrior, isn't he, Collins? There's only three defeats in 34 fights against Mike McCallum, Reggie Johnson, both of those in world title fights on points, and against Sambu Kalambe in a European title fight. He thought he was unlucky to lose Collins. So only top men have beaten this guy. Born again, Brown exposed on the ropes. Brown just seemed to sting Collins with one punch there. He just stepped off. For yes, a he moment. stepped off and got a, a decent punch on himself, but he's took a lot of hard punches, Neville Brown. 
Good work again from Collins in close, using the overcut in the right hand. Collins, as we thought going into this, looks, doesn't he, the stronger man, the natural super middleweight. Just physically, he seems the stronger. Every now and again, Brown turns and comes back with good punches himself. But he just can't seem to wobble Collins when he does get through. The punches seem to bounce off Collins. And when Collins lands, his punches seem to be having a real effect. Yes, he seems to be the stronger and the harder puncher of the two. And that time, Brown really muscled in, followed in with the elbow, tried to rough Collins up, play him at his own game. Chance of Steve-O, Steve-O. Credit to Brown, I don't think he's ever had to show as much guts as this. Showing real character in what is a tremendously hard fight. Remember Nigel Ben telling me it took him a whole year to make the graduation from middleweight up to super middleweight. And in an ideal world, Brown would have wanted a couple of fights at the new weight before going in this deep. But when opportunities arise, they have to be taken, I guess. Breathing very heavily, Brown, and increasingly it looks to be a lost cause for him. What do you think? Yes, I would agree at this stage. It's been very heavy work for Brown. Slip. Look to make that. Yes, he was just pushed off balance there. No count. No knockdown. As the bell goes to him, the round Brown gives Collins an old-fashioned look, but Collins is right on top. In the background there is uh, just leaning forward, that's Gemma, Steve Collins' wife, and there's his mum as well, with the blonde hair. Collins, despite all this snarling aggression you see on fight nights, is a very nice man to know. Chatty. He's a guy who's paid his dues in boxing, isn't he? Yes, he has. He's been a, a good, honest fighter. Done very well indeed. And he's deserved this chance. scorecard showing Collins in such a lead that Brown already needs the knockout by the look of it he needs to do what no man has done before and stop Steve Collins looking open the gloves have gone down maybe ominously for Brown yes he's obviously very very tired struggling to get his hands up there as he was forced back against the ropes Brown showing a good deal of bravery and pride. If he's going to go down in a world title fight, he's obviously made up his mind that he's going to be in there pitching right to the end if he can. But Brown needed something special in his last fight against Sean Cummins, and he, he did that. He's going to have to have something special again tonight, I feel. just can't dent Collins' ring of confidence. Great jab from him. Collins just carries on as if it never happened. 
Yes, Collins is so resilient. I think that's obviously been hard for Brown. He's hit him with his best punches, and Collins has just come straight back at him. Wonder what Sugar Boy Malinga, the new WBC champion, who beat Nigel Benn last week, is making of all of this as he assesses Collins from the ringside. Desperate lunging right hand from Brown, but at least it found the target. There's no underestimating this uh, weight thing, is there, really, Glenn? Between no, I... the, 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 the fellow who's been a middleweight and the man who's a full blown super who's middleweight. He's had fights at middleweight and is strong and at that division. Of course, it makes a, it's got to make a difference. And it has, emphatically. Brown lunging forward, but it's another round for Steve Collins and uh, Barry McGuigan, who's watching with us as well. Barry, this is beginning to look a bit of a hopeless cause for Neville Brown. Yeah, and I think, Ian, it is at this stage. I think he looks extremely tired. Uh, he tried his best, but... Uh, Steve Collins has a fabulous knack of making you fight his type of fight and that's what he done in this fight and he just completely has completely dominated, got off to a tremendous start, knocked down in the first, knocked down, sort of suspicious knocked down in the second, nevertheless a two point margin in each round and really he just ground this kid down, what courage from them, he put up a fabulous performance and you know, he can go home with, with his head high. But, uh, you know, he's losing this big, and uh, you never know, Collins might be able to force him, force the stoppage before the end of the fight. Thanks, Barry. Three rounds to go. He'll be very happy in the Collins corner. Brendan Ingle there. The man who's always there with Prince Nassim Hamid. Sends out Neville Brown for round ten. What can Brown do about this? It's almost as if he's fighting on instinct now. There's a good combination landed there by Steve Collins at the beginning of the round. He's still sharp, still got a bit left. Well, you couldn't say Brown has been frozen in the headlights here. Nothing like that. He didn't look phased when he came in there. I wonder if he might do after seeing some of his uh, behaviour at the press conferences this week when he seemed a little naive and bemused by things. That hasn't happened. But he's just found, as Chris Eubank did, this non-stop, relentless, marauding, brawling of Collins just too hot to handle. Yes, the, the style that he's adopted, it's working for Collins very well. Even good counter punches like Brown just can't, they just can't help him drawn into a fight. And it suits Collins so well. Big body punches there from Collins. Now he's teeing off to the head. Referee's taking a closer look. A much closer look. As Brown there lay with his back to the ropes. It's getting very, very one-sided now. Brown is very heavily marked up around the face. It's a really grueling fight for him. Swelling's beginning to appear. And it's getting to that point, even in a world title fight, where the referee must be thinking about the stoppage. And I wonder if Brendan Ingle in the uh, brown corner is thinking about pulling his man out. There doesn't seem to be a way back for him in the fight. It doesn't look like he could knock Collins out. There's a grimace, a kind of half-twisted smile from Brown in there. He's caught it yet again. This, this has been a much better round here for Collins. He's, he's the stronger of the two. Brown really starting to wield and starting to feel to get hurt quite badly by punches now. Yeah, I, I think it's got to the point where they do have to think of the stoppage now. Brown has given it everything he knows. It hasn't been enough, and he's now taken a fairly systematic beating. And referee Wiso Fernandez from Puerto Rico has been around long enough, I think. Collins is very close to stopping this fight. Brown lunges in, but I don't think he's got anything left. This has been a horrible round for him. 
Look at the bravery. Look at the bravery of Neville Brown. He's taken so much. Whips in a little left hand of his own. Collins just slipped. But yes, this has been a very, very hard round for Neville Brown, but the character he's shown, the will and the guts has been unbelievable. Well, how did he get through that? Now, they have to think quite carefully. I know it's a world title fight, but he looks to me like a man who's given it everything. Should he be asked to give any more? What do you think, Glenn? Well, I think... Obviously, he's so far behind, he's got to find a knockout. Does it look possible that he can do this? Colts has never been stopped before. He certainly doesn't look in any danger from that. I think you've got to ask yourself, certainly at this point, the referee has to look, keep a very close eye on Neville Brown. He's taking, look at the punches that he's taking there. Well, in the corner, Brendan Ingle is saying to Neville Brown, you've got two rounds to stop him. The chances of that, quite honestly, about as uh, high as me riding a Cheltenham Gold Cup winner come Thursday. He has landed with some good punches, but they just bounced off Collins, who's putting up some performance here, isn't he, himself? It's an unbelievable performance to come out to throw barrage of punches like this in the 11th round. His training must have been superb. He promised us that he would be back to his very best tonight, and he's been as good as his word, Steve Collins. Yes, certainly living up to the nickname of the Celtic Warrior. Oh, big right! Down goes Brown! Keels over! That went right to the sole of his boots. He almost did a backward somersault, and surely it won't go on now. Brown says he's all right. Amazingly, the referee lets it go on again. Well, I don't believe that. No, I think that was I a don't big believe mistake. That. Now he has stopped it. He should have stopped it before. It was a wonderful, brave effort by Neville Brown and a superlative performance by Steve Collins. From the word go, he just never stopped coming forward, throwing punches, relentless, and he looked a real champion out there tonight, Steve Collins. Great display from him.